if you would have asked me six years ago if I needed to walk through a season of this healing, I would have told you no. Hey there, if you believe in God and aren't really sure what to do with that belief, or if you personally know Jesus and want a deeper relationship with Him, then this podcast is for you. I'm Rachel Middleton, and welcome to the BookCast. Welcome to the final chapter of the BookCast. You know, a large majority of people won't have finished this book So if you have listened from chapter one, congratulations on being part of the few who have listened to it from the beginning. After today, you've officially read my book titled The Truest Thing. And if this is your first time joining us because someone happened to share this specific chapter with you, then I want to say a special welcome to you. And I am just as excited that you are here. Unless you check out the audiobook that has more content or work through the study guide companion that will both be released next week, this is the end of our time together. I want to thank you for coming along with me in this project. This has truly been a labor of love and a journey for me personally. Being able to write down my story and what God has done in it has been truly remarkable for my own spirituality. Thank you for coming along with me and for sharing this journey together. I am truly honored to have shared this time with you. I trust that God will continue to show you who you are in Him, because that's how He works. He continues to draw us closer to Him as we discover our identity in Christ, which really is the truest thing. From the First Epistle of Peter, Chapter 2, Verse 9 But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of this darkness into his wonderful light. Chapter 12 Your Story If you are like me, then you too have felt the hurt of living in the middle of this broken world, and you have felt the struggle of this life. I think it's safe to say that everyone has experienced pain and sadness. Perhaps you are familiar with some of the same hurts and trials that I've been through, and perhaps I couldn't fathom what you've been through. But I marvel in the fact that God can. I stand in awe at the fact that He knows your story and is intimately connected to it. I trust that He has been there to walk you through the difficult situations in your life waiting for you to turn to Him in the pain and struggle. I believe that God has more to show each of His children, but I especially have faith for you, dear reader. I believe that your story is just as important as mine, because ultimately, our stories are testimonies to the goodness and faithfulness of our Heavenly Father, and I trust Him to continue to grow you. Physical Therapy Growth is not always easy. I think that we too often like to focus on the fun, good, or glamorous aspects of growth and self-help and expect the difficult parts of growth to just happen automatically. Things like fitness, nutrition, reading books, and learning coping mechanisms are important. However, I want to gently suggest that they are among some of the easier aspects of growth. Oftentimes, we want to focus on these to a fault and neglect the difficult and sometimes painful work of diving into our filthy pool of emotions to clean it out. If you would have asked me six years ago if I needed to walk through a season of this healing, I would have told you no. I didn't think I needed it. But thankfully, God didn't wait for my permission before performing life-saving surgery on my soul, my heart, and my spirit. But, to be honest, it wasn't just the surgery that I needed, but the recovery time, the physical therapy, if you will, that came afterwards. In our physical world, the physical therapy part of recovery can be painful and difficult and can sometimes feel like we're not quite ready for it. After a massive surgery, for us humans, the same is true for the recovery part of emotional and spiritual healing. 
just as someone at the very beginning of physical therapy after a major surgery might not feel completely ready or strong enough to take on the work of physical therapy, we do not always see ourselves as strong enough to work through some of these deep emotional and spiritual wounds when we first begin our journey. Just like physical therapy follows surgery to restore the body to its full capacity, so God uses all kinds of therapy to restore our souls after surgery. Yes, the therapy sometimes hurts. No, we do not always feel entirely ready for it, but I have found that trusting and following the orders of the healer is always the best option. I've also found that the longer I wait to take steps in healing, the longer the healing takes. In the physical realm, if you wait past the recommended date for physical therapy, you risk muscle atrophy and other medical complications that could lengthen the recovery time. I believe the same is true in this area of emotional and spiritual healing. The sooner we open our hearts to allow Jesus to grow our muscles of emotional healing, the sooner we feel stronger. It has taken me years of working my recovery and consciously choosing to take steps towards God and healing for me to feel strong again. While I'm far from perfect, I no longer shy away from the pain and struggle in the recovery process because my muscles know the strength that comes afterwards. And the best part is that it's not my strength, it's God's. When we choose to walk in surrender to His plan, grounded in Him as our source of identity, we get to depend on His strength to get us through the most painful parts of life. I have a long way to go still in this identity journey, but I keep going because I can imagine the future that will come from living this out. Just imagine. Just imagine with me for a moment. If we all lived out of our identity in Christ, what would that look like? What would happen if every person called by the name of Christian truly believed that the truest thing about themselves was the love of Jesus? What would our local churches and communities look like if we really lived like the truest thing about us was that we are wildly and outrageously loved by the God of the universe? What kind of impact would we make on our world? I can imagine what kind of world that would be. I imagine it would look a lot like what the prophet Isaiah talks about in chapter 61, verse 1 of the book of Isaiah. We would see a world where the poor could hear the good news and find salvation in Christ. Shattered pieces of broken hearts would be bound up and given a safe space to heal. We would live in a world where those who have been captive to sin and shame would be set free. Families that have been bound by alcohol, pornography, anger, offense, and pain for generations would no longer be slaves to those vices. People would be free to live out of their God-given identity. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim victory to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Isaiah 61, 1 I'm not saying that everyone should follow me or my example. I will continue to need grace myself. No, what I'm saying is that we all should follow in Jesus' example. He is the example we follow. He is the one who binds up the brokenhearted and sets captives free. And it is only because he lives inside of us that we get to do the same thing. We are called to be a light to the world. We carry Jesus with us wherever we go. And when we live out of our identity in Christ, the people around us are led to the one who can free and heal them. Next Steps I believe that God wants to take us to deeper levels in Him, both relationally and in how we represent Jesus to the world. I believe He has growth for each of us. So now, the only question is, how? How do we live a life so grounded in Jesus 
that it not only changes our life, but the lives of those around us. By taking one small step of growth at a time. Perhaps your next small step of growth is scheduling a counseling appointment or finding a local Celebrate Recovery and going through the 12 steps. Perhaps it is getting plugged into a community of believers near you or reaching out to a friend and inviting them to walk with you in your identity journey. Your next step could look like intentionally leaning into prayer and reading the Word of God. Or maybe your next step is reading through another book on healing or working through The Truest Thing, a guided journey study guide. Whatever the next step looks like, we get to keep following Jesus in this identity journey we call life. So right now, I want to create some space to ask God directly what his next steps are for us as individuals. He knows what path is best for each of our situations, so let's invite him to illuminate the next step that he has for us. Whenever you are ready, please open your hands and hold them palms up as if you're expecting to receive a gift. Take a deep breath and pray this prayer with me. Jesus, thank you that the truest thing about me is the fact that I am loved by and found in you. Thank you for bringing me closer and for always being with me. Holy Spirit, teach me what you have next for me. Please show me the next step that you specifically have for me to deepen my walk with you. Let's take a moment and just listen and sit in his presence. Did you hear, see, or sense anything? Whatever your next steps are, I pray that you continue to seek the Lord in them. I encourage you to take whatever step the Holy Spirit has for you. Don't let this book just be a good story or a one-time experience. Instead, I pray that you let it be a springboard into the next part of your spiritual journey. The truest thing. I know this is just the beginning of our identity journey because we have only scratched the surface of how deep God's love goes. But for me, this has been a wonderful start to intentionally seeing more depth in my identity in Christ. At the beginning of this project, I had a close friend tell me that listening to my book was almost like sitting in our favorite corner at Duncan and chatting over some coffee. Since she told me that, I've imagined you, dear listener, sitting with us in those bright orange and pink chairs, sharing our stories along with a cup of coffee. If I could see you right now, I'm sure that I would want to pray for you. Whatever grace God has given me in this identity journey, I would want to give to you. I would want to pray that this is the beginning of something new in your heart. I pray that this begins a new chapter in your own life where God shows you his deep and passionate love for you and continues to reveal the truest thing about yourself. Even though I may not know you personally, I know that God does. He knows you, and I trust him with your heart. So whenever you're ready, I'd like to do just that. I'd like to pray for you. When you're ready, Quiet your spirit, open your heart, and if you feel comfortable, hold out your hands again, as if to receive something from our Heavenly Father. Dear most beautiful and gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for the person on the other side of this book and for the time we've had together. Thank you for this journey of reflection, growth, and intimacy with you. Thank you for walking alongside us as we take steps that bring us closer to you. 
Holy Spirit, I ask that you would continue to open their hearts and continue the work that you are doing in them. I pray for an increased awareness that they would feel you in everyday life and also in the trials. I marvel in the fact that you know every detail of their story. You know their hurts, struggles, and you are right there with them. Jesus, please show them who they truly are in you. Reveal to them who they are in the light of your sacrifice. Help them live out of that secure place of being a child of the King. Allow the fact that they are your child to sink into every part of their life and help them to carry a felt sense of grounding in who they are for the rest of their journey. Father, bring us to a place of deeper intimacy with you and reveal to us your beauty. Show us the deepest part of ourselves and how that portion of us is directly tethered to who you are. Help us continue this identity journey as we seek to know your heart. Help us to know the very core of our being, that you are indeed the truest thing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Resources The first resource we had in this book was a song, so I felt it fitting to include another one here at the end. Full Circle by Jacob Stanifer puts into song many of the feelings and concepts shared in my story. The transparency of the lyrics and the beauty of the melody caught me off guard when I first came across this song, so I hope that it brings up some of those same feelings for you. Also, if you did not get an explicit next step from the Lord, I have a suggestion. I encourage you to read Are You Really Okay? Getting Real About Who You Are how you're doing, and why it matters by Deborah Filetta. I happened to listen to this book after completing the writing of my own, and it was fabulous. I honestly wish that I had read it sooner in my journey because of the healing God has brought to me while reading it. If you found yourself relating to my story and would like to go deeper, then I believe that reading or listening to Are You Really Okay? by Deborah Filetta would be an ideal next step. I am truly so thankful that you listened to The Truest Thing, published via the bookcast. Because this has been an experiment, your feedback is so incredibly valuable to me. I want to hear your thoughts on this book and the project as a whole. So please consider writing a review and telling me what you think. You can write a review of the bookcast now, or you can write one on the audiobook, that is being released next week via Audible. I have an idea for at least one more book that I'd like to release as a podcast too, but that depends on how well this book is received. So I'm excited to read each and every one of the reviews you leave and see what God has been doing in your heart through our time together. For now, I'll say goodbye and thank you for joining me on this journey. I pray God's favor and blessings over you and your own faith journey. And for the last time, I pray that you have a blessed day in Jesus. Acknowledgements Throughout this process in creating the bookcast of The Truest Thing, there have been several people who have been instrumental that I would like to acknowledge. This might get a little emotional, so here we go. First off, I'd like to give a big shout out to my own personal cheerleaders the people who read each and every chapter while I was writing The Truest Thing. Thank you, Hillel, Corazon, Kim Ann, and Heather for your encouragement, ideas, inspiration, and helpful proofreading of the actual writing of the book. And, Brian Benz, I'm going to thank you specifically. The ability to chat with you about theological ideas, concepts, and analogies was an invaluable gift. I know you don't like being called out, but too bad. You've been extra helpful, brother, and I can't thank you enough. I also want to thank specifically Leah Hampton. Even though you were only able to offer your opinion on the first few chapters, you had an immense impact on the book as a whole. Your helpful critique of and willingness to challenge what I wrote helped me really hone my voice and clarify my target audience. I know that this book would have a totally different feel 
if it was not for your courage to ask me some challenging questions. So I just wanted to say thank you to my loving and incredibly kind husband, Robert. Without you, this book simply would not exist. From being willing to build a recording studio in our basement, to reading and recording every single word, to working your magic with sound engineering, to the numerous date nights that were engulfed in conversation about the bookcast. I have seen every bit of love that you have poured into this project, and I am truly grateful. This has not been a solo project for me, but a labor of love for both of us, and I recognize that. But above all of that, my love, thank you for your constant insight and encouragement. When I questioned if the bookcast was worth the thousands of hours, we have poured into it. You said something truly inspired. It's not the success that we are committed to. It's the calling God's given you. The book cast wasn't even your idea, and the truest thing isn't even your story. But yet you understood the assignment that God had for us and adopted it as your own. And in that moment of discouragement, it was exactly what I needed to hear. So whether 12 people listen to this book, or 12,000 people listen, I want to make sure that they know that you are the reason it happened. Darling Bear, you have no idea how much I genuinely appreciate you. Thank you for this and so much more. I just love you so much. Lastly, to the one who sits upon the throne of the universe and the throne of my heart, the one who found me at my lowest and raised me up, the one who took my sorrow and replaced it with true joy, Father God, this has all been for you. Thank you for weaving your beauty into my story and allowing me to see your hand at work throughout my life. Thank you for trusting me with this special idea for a book in the form of a podcast. I recognize that idea did not come from me, but it was you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving me the strength to see it through. On the days when it was overwhelming, thank you for your grace and mercy. As it says in 1 Corinthians 1.30, Jesus, thank you for being my wisdom, righteousness, holiness, and redemption. I owe everything to you. I love and I trust you. Amen.